anytime you take away money from the 500 real public schools, they have less teachers, higher class sizes. What do you think that does in teaching all the students? Sure. It makes it harder to meet the test scores. It's just, you know, you got 30 people in a class, it's not as easy as teaching 11 people in a class. Not as much personal attention. And everybody kind of forgets that. When you cut back, what do you have to get rid of? 60% of a budget in a school is payroll. I sued them for third-party contractors. They wouldn't tell us how they were spending their $50 million every year. And that, of course, I had a very famous lawsuit against the school board blockhead, Robert Acurio. Hi, Bobby. Are you watching? This is a man that has quite a few different... He's in his mid-70s and he has multiple jobs and the secret is you're independent contractors, so you don't punch a time clock, you just pay somebody. If you're out there watching this, run for office, get elected, get some of these contracts, no one cares. And if people trash you, you'll get real. I look at the school board. They've been in for decades, one family. We have seen childcare close only to be resurrected again after only a year, giving enrolled students an inconsistent programming opportunity. Any vocational training not offered at the high school has been used to the CTC at significant district costs. $6 million has been pledged to vocational and technical education by Trump, and recently Wolf signed the CTC students will not need to take any state mandated tests to graduate, which will increase our graduation rates and careers. The bottom line is the teachers and the ESP staff are the face-to-face -face daily interaction with the students. We set the climate for the students and create the atmosphere for love of learning. When these programs and jobs are lost, students lose out on educational opportunities. Please reconsider these positions. We would like to have more direct communication with the board so that you are able to hear directly the concerns of your teachers. And this is signed by the executive team for GJEA. Thank you. I am against the tax increase. I've said this before. I've asked the school board to look into how many administrative positions you have. Maybe, hey, there some are redundant. Get rid of some. I said this before at the closing of the middle school. Try to cut positions, not raise our taxes. I am dead against raising taxes. The school board has to find better ways of remaining fiscally responsible. I feel you're not doing that. I feel a lot of the positions that were created in the past don't, aren't necessary anymore. Cut them. And I would ask you to consider this when you're voting on tonight's tax increase. Do you need to raise taxes 1.82 mils, or can you reduce the debt in the school by cutting some of these positions? Think about it. It's a, it's a legitimate question to ask. Are we spending too much as a district? What's your biggest concern tonight? The biggest concern with the teacher furloughs in areas like math, where it is a uh, core competency that students need to know. Um, there's also two vocational cuts, and vocational funding has been increased at the federal level through uh, Trump's initiative, also through uh, Governor Wolf. He just signed in a plan yesterday stating that vocational students would no longer have to take the mandated standardized testing for graduation requirements. So students that are in career fields would have a or higher graduation rate. Um, and also be viable for employment upon graduation from high school. I have court with the Cambria County Commissioners on June 20th to find out how much the school block head, Robert Acurio, makes with his four alleged paychecks. Yeah. Four people. Job at the school, job at the Child Development Corps, job at the YMCA, job at the Union Social. And you have proof of this? Yeah. Where have you found the proof of Right to know requests from the school records themselves. Tuesday, we went to um, to court against our friend Bobby Arcurio, and Bobby brought his uh, big posse with him. I guess he needed protecting from us. Did they do anything to intimidate you? Mm -mm. They just kept they just kept giving us the big stare down, and we just gave it back to him. Because rumor was that Bobby worked for the Child Development Corp and that the Cambria County Commissioners were getting a $3.9 million pass-through grant. They were shuffling this money from the county to a corporation to the school so it wasn't right to knowable. So you believe that Mr. Arcurio works with the county contract? I believe that Mr. Arcurio is getting government funding from somewhere. See, so in order to avoid today's lawsuit, all they had to do was say, here's what he makes. We didn't have to go through this circus today. 
anyone in this courthouse, they're government employees, they serve a government function. Arguing that the money goes to another nonprofit that I give to a corporation to insulate it, I feel that's a cover up. Hello. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, I see everybody made it today. I'm Vince Grassi, I'm the filmmaker making the documentary. Oh, you guys, you know me? Yeah. I don't think I've introduced myself to everyone. Um, hi, Vince Grassi. Brian. Brian, all right. Uh, are you the attorney today? Um, no. Okay. Well, I'm just here uh, in support. You're also the Okay. That's a, that's yeah, okay. I just want everybody to get where you're being from. Yeah, I, just letting everybody know that we're working on a documentary kind of based on the city of Johnstown and all kinds of nice do you, uh, Do I need to sign a release? Eventually, I think so, once uh, the film is I, I'm released. not willing to sign it, okay. so I want you to understand that. Okay, that's fine. I will not sign a release. All right. All right. What about you, you, sir? No interest. Are you Mr. Acurio? No. Oh, okay. Who's Mr. Acurio? It's none of your business. Oh, just kind of and I do not want represented in your films either. We're just so go away. Working on a documentary. Would you leave uh, me alone and quit harassing me? Oh, all right. I'm just just trying to ask some questions. I want to get a share of this stuff. I've got this guy out here. I mean, as soon as that case ended, it number one, it was two hours. We didn't think it was going to last 30 minutes, let alone two hours. And as quickly as it ended, they ushered Bobby Arcurio and his posse out the door, and they were literally running for their lives down the stairwell. They didn't take the elevator. They were literally running down the stairs. And what was an issue today is, is whether the Cameron County Child Development is the type of government entity that has to supply information. The issue today is what was before the judge is we believe it wasn't. The law protects the nonprofit corporation. In essence, the 5013C that we are to um, not supply those names. The major so. issue the county raised was that the money they receive from the grant is not tax money. I argue that according to the Child Development Corp's 990 forms, they list 99.99% of their funding comes from tax dollars. So whether it's the county money, the school money, or another government source, the issue is it's tax money and needs to be, it needs to be released. I've asked myself now, we had a major trial, we've had three different hearings leading up to it, why haven't they just released one salary? If you're making 30 or 40,000, just release it. What's the secret? Uh, I won my appeal with the Office of Open Records, and now the commissioners are fighting it. They don't want to release the information. And all of this has been like one big domino. Thank you for this opportunity to speak before you today. And thank you for giving me this opportunity, as I know you give all our citizens and taxpayers in this community the right to speak up even when we think you're wrong. Yesterday's court hearing was a circus to me. Three of you weren't there to see it. Mr. Barbin was. I stood up against two very well-educated attorneys, and Mr. Barb and I will admit, you destroyed me in court. Congratulations. I'm a single taxpayer who's not an attorney, demanding answers. And I made the comment, why weren't the three of you there, standing next to me, demanding the release of the salary information? Why are you not taking up and standing for the taxpayers? I was very offended you were not there, because I felt the three of you should have been. Because in my opinion, I'm afraid that the corporation controls you. I almost want to ask you, are they giving money to your campaign? Has any of them given money to your races? Is that why you're so afraid to go up against them? What is the truth with the corporation? And why are you not taking a stand? Because you didn't pull the grant, you didn't form an investigation, and if you did, you need to tell us. I, when I said disgrace, I meant it. So who's the biggest uh, victim then of all this that you feel? I would feel the students are paying the price. The students are, are losing um, a guidance counselor, one to service 12, or 1,250 students, uh, one gym teacher to service 1,250 students, um, two vocational programs. Uh, one is closed completely. Uh, the other one, the enrollment will be curtailed because of the second teacher is being furloughed. Um, so again, I think it's the uh, students the whole way around. Well, I'm here because I have the understanding that the school is cutting their electrical program Program, which my son has invested two years um, of education in it. Uh, I think I don't want that to happen. He's going to be a senior this new school year. 
and and it's just like what it's a waste of time you know what did he do all those two years I just think that they should at least let the kids that have the time invested into it finish the course out at least you know because this is what he wants to do as a career you know this is what he he loves so I really hate to see him miss out on his final year of school without having that education that that program gives him if they have to do it with the program offer up an alternative program to where you can continue on in the electrical field yeah, no one likes paying higher taxes, but if, if you have to, to better his education, then I'll do what I have to do. As long as as the, the as funds as the go, money, as long as the, the funds are used properly. Yes. Is considering all the taxes that you paid up to this point, is this sort of a letdown for you? Uh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. The Auditor General called it the appearance of nepotism. You draw your own conclusion. After you raised your questions, there was a full audit done of all their, all their monies that the county gives them. And the key is that the county gives them. The county is not a super government in charge of every township, borough, and school district in the state. The county has its proper scope of authority that it operates in. The Greater Johnstown School District has its scope of authority that it operates in. And if you want information concerning the Greater Johnstown School District operation, you should go to them. We're not the super clearinghouse for all the information you want on any, on any township, borough, city, or school district in Cambria County. It's real clear. That's Section 506D1 of the Right to Know Law. It says that third-party contractors have to disclose their records to, to a citizen about the governmental function being carried out with the governmental agency. You were provided all the information, to my knowledge, and if you think of another question, we'll answer it for you, but you were provided all the information from the third party contractor about the county contract. I disagree. And to say that the commissioner should cancel a $3.6 million contract that provides child care to hundreds of Cameron County working families, that's just, that, that boggles my mind, John. It's a shell game and you know it. Exactly. We do know that Cynthia Alborn, the Johnstown School Board President, works for the County, County, Ch uh, Cambria County Child Development Board, which is on her documents because she abstained from a vote. We do, we do know Bob Curio does work there because his son, Vince Curio, is a school board director from the Greater Johnstown School District. That was on an abstention from a vote. So we know these things. We also know that Robert Curio also works for the YMCA because it was an abstention on a vote that they had because there's a contract that the Greater Johnstown School District had with them. So we know that's a fact, otherwise, that if it's not a fact, then they're lying on their extension forms. And we also know that he works at the Union Social. We know he delivers meals on wheels for the county because the county's admitted that to me before. So my question is, I originally asked, when you have a person who's a shadow figure, who has four potential jobs, like I wanted to ask the question, how many hours a week does this man work? Does he sleep? Is he working eight hours a day at the Child Development Court, eight hours a day at the YMCA? eight hours a day at the Union Social, eight hours a day delivering Meals on Wheels. We know he has an office in the Greater Johnstown School District, so my question is, how many government paychecks does this man receive, and what is he getting paid, and why are they not releasing the information? So because there's a multitude of paychecks. So. Uh, lightning has struck now three times for me this year. I won against the appeal for the Child Development Corp. I won the appeal with the DA for the drug forfeiture account, and I won the appeal with the county again for the DUI account. So now I'm setting up a pattern where now we've had three appeal victories. So even if I lose in court with Judge Bernstein and have to appeal to the Commonwealth Court, I feel stable enough in my belief that I'm seeking accountability and truth. I still think I should have won, but Judge Bernstein was very 
didn't know what she was doing. She's the judge that just got pulled, busted by the superior court for illegally putting people in jail for debtor's prison. So at first I thought she was dirty and corrupt. I made fun of her as the Bernstein Bears. And then I thought, maybe she's just incompetent. And that's okay. We heard through back channels that the governor pulled the $3.9 million grant. I'm still trying to confirm that. I know the school is trying to get volunteers now to work Bobby's job. What was he getting paid? Who knows? The district uh, would show, they would provide the information in terms of the blanket payments going to the entity, whether it was the YMCA or the Child Development Corporation, they would have those blanket payments. But when it came to asking about individuals' names and what their pay grade was, they would say they didn't have it. And I mean, it, it's right here. The documents are right here. I mean, these were documents that were provided to the Department of Education by the district in black and white. It, it's incredible that they would say that and take that position. I think every town has an Acurio. I think every town has a fictional leader who's behind the scenes with money, who manipulates people for their own contracts and political doings. I don't think it's a unique story. I think what's unique about it here is the fact that it's happened on this level for so long and there's no one to challenge it. You know, before Joe and I hit the scene, who was here to say, what are you doing? And I've been bashed and trashed and what do I do? I share and I laugh because there's nothing going on in this community. Same people over and over. Well, I've been trying to seek our other side of the story for quite a while, and you're the only ones who want to speak up. Well, they have to have something to hide. Well, we have nothing to hide. I will keep you updated. <laughs> and there's the mythical, the mythical school board room. Yeah. I believe it's raining this heavy. Mm. You know what shocked me? It was a pack room full of people, mm -hmm. which means people really are paying attention. Mm -hmm.